Who's here on Ape Rosuniga? Thank you. The other was not that she was in the yeah. All right. Court is calling 2019 CR 4221 and 2022 CR 3449, State of Texas versus April Petulia Zuniga. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Daniel Escobar for the state of Texas. Defense. Brian Kimbrough for Ms. Zuniga. Ms. Zuniga, in each of these cause numbers, I'm showing you what's entitled motion to revoke community supervision. Did you review those documents with your attorney? Did you understand them? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm going to need you to speak up. Yes, ma'am. Are you the same April Zuniga who was placed on community supervision in 2019 CR 4221 for the offense of driving while intoxicated third or more on November 14th, I'm sorry, November 4th, 2019 for a term of five years? Is that you? Yes, ma'am. And are you the same April Zuniga who was placed on community supervision in cause number 2022 CR 3449W? For the offense of burglary of a habitation on April 11, 2022, for a term of four years. Is that you? Uh, yes, ma'am. All right. Is there any objection uh, to the state reading uh, one motion for each cause? No. Yeah. All right. State? Violated condition number three on or about the ninth day of October 2022 until the 15th day of October 2022 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, April, Petula, and we got then in there associate with persons of harmful character in that said persons negotiate with the defendant to purchase or delivery of controlled substances in violation of condition number three how do you please that true or not true true okay violated condition number three on or about the 14th day of october 2022 until the 23rd day of october 2022 in bear county texas the defendant april patula zuniga did then in there associate with a person engaged in criminal activity a violation of condition number three. How do you plead to that? True or not true? True. Okay, last one. Judge. Violated condition number 41 on or about the first day of October 2022 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant, April Petula Zuniga, did then and there fail to comply with the rules and regulations of the felony drug court of entering an establishment whose primary purpose was to sell alcoholic beverages and remained at said location where alcohol was the main item for sale or consumption. A violation condition number 41. How do you please to that true or not true? True. All right, state waives all other violations. Any objections to the state's waivers? No objection. All right. Did you understand by pleading true to violations 3, 3, and 41? And cause number 2019 CR 4221. The court could find it true, grant the motion, and sentence you up to six years in prison. Did you understand? Yes, ma'am. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead uh, true to violations 3, 3, and 41 in that cause number? Yes, ma'am. Court will find that true. And in cause number um, 2022 CR 3449W, did you understand by pleading true to violations 3, 3, and 41? The court could find it true, grant the motion, and sentence you up to four years in prison. Did you understand? Yes, sir. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violations 3, 3, and 41? Yes, sir. And that cause number the court will find 3, 3, and 41 true. Is there an agreement? Uh, yes, Your Honor. It's for the defendant to go to state ISF and to then go back to the drug, drug court program. Does drug court want her? Uh, that was a part of the um, probation recommendations. That's what they listed that the judge was willing to take her back once she went through either state ISF or CP. And that was, yeah, the Judge Glenn indicated that he would continue her in drug court if she agreed to go to state ISF. And that, that's in the in the uh, summary, court summary from uh, from Mark Hewitt. Okay, so Ms. Zuniga, why should I just send you to prison? It appears that you haven't done anything except pick up a new case and hang around people you're not supposed to be around. So why should I just send you to prison? 
because um, I mean, I, I was doing everything like as of my classes, my UAs. I was no, you were in an establishment that's primary purpose was to sell alcohol, and they said you were arranging some kind of drug sale with somebody. No, no, I guess no. They were like, I guess um, they they were used, using excessive abuse. That, I can't understand I, a word you're saying. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't in the middle of any drug like drug use or anything like that. But um, also, I'm also doing like my classes for CPS for my for my kids. And no, I mean, here's the I'm, thing: CPS was going on while this was happening. Yes, and you were not doing what you're supposed to do. The violations that were just read to me. One of the violation is. Um, on or about the 9th day of October 2022 until the 15th day of October 2022 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant April Petunia Zuniga did then and there associate with persons of harmful character and that said persons negotiated with the defendant the purchase or delivery of controlled substances. That's what you just played true to. So I don't understand why I shouldn't just send you to prison. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I know what probation is recommending. I know what felony drug court is recommending, but I don't understand why I shouldn't just send you to prison. I mean, because I, I do want change. No, I mean, I you, you won't change now because you don't want to go to prison. So I don't understand why I shouldn't send her to prison. Does somebody want to tell me why she shouldn't go to Wait, prison? Your Honor, I don't know the facts or the, or the nature of the allegation. And I can tell you that I called Mark Hewitt, her probation officer, probably five times over the last, because I reset the case for a week. Mm -hmm. And I, con I try to contact him to see what the nature of these allegations was. The main thing I noticed is that Judge Glenn, whom I know and I respect, said that, and he knows this much better than I do, that he would be willing to keep her in drug court if she went to state ISF. Now, I mean, I know him, I respect him too, but I still don't understand why I should do it. Well, I, again, I don't know the, the details of what happened with these individuals that she was associating with. She's not charged with any criminal offense other than me. So she's not accused of being involved in a drug deal. I don't know what that, I mean, I understand how it's worded, but I don't know what the, what the actual facts are in that. I've asked April, and frankly, April's not helping me, and I don't understand what happened. But the main thing I, I find is that she, the, the, the drug court said they will keep her. From my experience with drug court, they normally don't do that unless they see a reason to keep her, because otherwise they want her out. They don't keep people that they don't think could benefit from drug court and could succeed, could succeed. Judge Glenn feels that she needs to go to inpatient and ISF is appropriate. I'm only asking the judge to give her that opportunity based on what the recommendation from Judge Glenn is. See, I don't know why they didn't just keep her then and send her to ISF. Well, I, I don't know how that works because, I mean, they accused her of violating her probation. So I'm assuming that do they have their own MTR deal in drug court? Hey, they could just not send her in. Um, we're going to go off the record for. Yes, Judge. And Ms. Zuniga, come down. And we're not on the record. Ms. Zuniga, how old are you? 32. All right, so here's the thing. You have, could everyone please whisper? You've already entered your pleas of true. And I understand that people are in different seasons of their life. And I understand that sometimes people are treated badly in life. I understand that sometimes people are misused and abused in their life, but uh, I, went into the hallway because I wanted to speak with Judge Glenn and your attorney was present and the state's attorney was present. Uh, it's very difficult to speak on the bench with another judge. So that's why we were in the hallway. 
and we were discussing things with Judge Glenn, and here's the problem. The problem is people are trying to help you. People are trying to work with you. And I know sometimes it's difficult to change people, places, and things, but in order to be successful, you're going to have to change people, places, and things. And I used to always think that was easy to do because I worked as attorney in all the treatment courts before, right? And I was the original attorney. And when people would say, you need to change people, places, or things, I'd be like, hey, that's easy. But then when I started thinking about it, for example, if people told me to change people, places, and things, and they say, okay, Judge Boyd, this is what we want you to do. We want you to hang out with people who sell drugs. We want you to hang out with people who use drugs. That would be very difficult for me because of the circles I'm in. I don't know a lot of people who use drugs or sell drugs. Now I have people who come before me in court who do that, but it's not like these are the people that I am having dinner with or lunch with or say, hey, let's go painting with, let's go do painting with a twist. And while we're there, maybe we can sell drugs. So it would be very difficult for me to change people, places and things. And so in your situation, these are the people you've been hanging with. But if you want your life to be successful, and if you don't want to end up in prison, then you're going to have to change your people, places, or things. I was about to send you to prison, and not for two years. I was going to send you to prison for six years on one case and four on the other. And you need to make a decision on whether or not you want to go to prison. And you have children? Yes. You need to start asking yourself each time you're getting ready to do something, you need to ask yourself, is this something that will result in me not seeing my children for six years or not seeing my children for four years or going to prison for six years or going to prison for four years? Do you understand? Yes, At some point, you need to start putting your children above your wants, your needs, above the people you hang out with. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Now, Judge Glenn said he's willing to accept you back in the felony drug court. So we're going to put a hold on her. And the hold is for felony drug court. And so felony drug court is going to take care of what they do with you. And I'm telling you right now, you're looking at either safe P or ISF with them. If you don't want to do safe P with them, you need to tell me now, because if you don't want to do safe P with them, then I can send you to prison. We can move on to the next person. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. So if they uh, order you to safe P, are you going to be doing that? And if that's the only choice I have for them. Um, yeah, that may be the, your only choice. And they won't have state ISF. What I'm telling you is, my question for you is, if they order you to go to safe P, are you going to do it? Yes, ma'am. That's my only question. We can't write our own programs. If you could write your own program, guess what? You wouldn't be on probation for this because you would have been successful at it. So I'm not making a ruling. We're going to refer her back to felony drug court and she's to remain in custody for felony drug court. And uh, Mr. Kimbrough, you may want to make sure that you're in touch with um, Felony Drug Court to make sure that they remember that this is not a first time referral. This is just sending her back. All right. Is there anything else? No. You better change your ways. One or two things going to end up happening if you don't change. Either you're going to end up in prison. Either you're going to get a bad batch of drugs, in which case you may overdose. But either way, if you don't change your ways, you're not going to have contact with your children. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Is there anything else? Um, All right. Uh, how long does the NOE take for the felony drug court? Oh, they'll probably get to you uh, this week. It's Tuesday. They'll probably get to you this week. <laughs> you beg your ass. You're welcome. Okay, so you see what happens. So they're not going to do anything for you about the phone. You know? Let's get the facts straight. She loves a verbal ashtray. Never blowing smoke when she gets pissed. She's quick to castrate. Love her on a good day. Love her on a bad day. Either way, she's here to stay.